Please help me welcome the Democratic nominee for Texas Lieutenant Governor, Leticia Vandepute. Well, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. I am delighted to be here, and I have to say, first of all, how glad I am that you got here safely. Uh, with all of the floods and the rain, uh, there were so many members who, uh, if they tried to get in yesterday, it was just so difficult. So safety first. Thank you very much. And as much as we hate to lose members who could have been here, but their flights were canceled or they couldn't, we desperately need this rain. And so uh, I know that your home communities think so as well. Maybe we should think of it as a blessing. So thank you very much for being here. The best gift that you can give is the gift of your time. And so I first want to give a shout out to those who are from my hometown in San Antonio or the Central Texas area. I know that you uh, are absolutely uh, a prize for me. And those of you who do not know me, first of all, let me congratulate you. Uh, TCTA has had the reputation in Austin of being credible, of being focused, and absolutely uh, in the workings within the education committee, both in the House and in the Senate. And I can honestly tell you, being in the Senate Committee on Education since 1999, no major uh, policy and a lot of minor policies never occur at that Capitol without your TCTA being in the room with the decision makers. <laughs> absolutely. Lonnie, Holly, all of your team is just great. Well, I'm very proud to stand before you today as the daughter of a teacher. My mom, Belle, retired uh, after 36 years of teaching, and uh, Mama was uh, a, a music teacher. And she started off uh, in uh, San Antonio Independent School District, Edgewood Independent School District, Northside, all in the San Antonio area. My daddy started out as an English teacher in the Edgewood School District in the early 1950s. So. I know I'm dating myself, but you got to get over it because once you run for public office, your birth date is public record. So in the 50s, I grew up with my family, my mama and daddy being teachers. And it was something that we all were so very proud of. Uh, my dad then went on to law enforcement, but mother stayed teaching and became a great administrator. In fact, mama is the teacher. Uh, in the 1960s who really began the cultural music and the program of mariachi music. She's known as the mother of mariachi education here in the state of Texas and absolutely nationwide. But my sister is a saint. My sister Annabelle just retired 31 years. Kindergarten. Who does that? I mean, she is out over there. I mean, she is an angel. She is a saint. And my brother-in-law, now in his 29th year teaching history in high school, my brother, 22 years, middle school music teacher. So you can see if I don't get things right for education and for teachers, my Thanksgiving is miserable. <laughs> but really, my heart belongs to the teachers. Uh, I've been married to Pete Vandepute for 37 years. And when I married him, he was the cutest band director you'd ever seen. Uh, and I want to clarify something, because sometimes when you run for public office, your personal stories get a little switched up. So I graduated from Jefferson High School in San Antonio. Great public school education, fantastic teachers. And I can honestly tell you that I would not be here today or a state senator had it not been for the rigorous teachers, the inspirational teachers that I had uh, all during my public school uh, career right there in San Antonio. I graduated in 1973. Pete Vandepute, it'll be listed on his resume that he was a band director at Jefferson High School in 1973. Make no mistake, I graduated in May. He didn't get there until the fall of 73. Because <laughs> they'll, they'll say, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, it wasn't it. But I will admit, my mother did introduce me to this uh, fabulous uh, student teacher who was doing his practice teaching at Lanier High School in the band hall. And mother was in the choir hall right across. So I will absolutely tell you that my mom introduced me to the man of my dreams. 
Uh, Pete and I have six children, and they're all grown, and they are out of the house. <laughs> they're out of college. And real victory, they're on someone else's health care plan. Yes. <laughs> That's when you know success has gotten there. And uh, I am very, very thrilled. Now the same house that we live in, a block and a half from where I grew up, is now filled with the laughter and sometimes chaos of six nearly perfect grandchildren. Uh, and it is amazing. So I come before you today because I want to be, I want to have the responsibility as the next lieutenant governor of the state of Texas. It is imperative for me. It is something that I feel strongly about. And if you had asked me a year ago, I, I wouldn't have even dreamed it. You see, our family had a really tough year last year. We had a lot of losses. And it wasn't that I didn't want or I didn't think that I couldn't do the job because I know I can do this job as lieutenant governor, one of the most important positions in state government. But our family lost a lot and we were just trying to heal. And I didn't think my family was strong enough. But they're educators. They've proved me wrong. They're in this and particularly during the fall when we heard all the really harsh, ugly rhetoric, and the campaigning that was happening on the other side, I just couldn't do it. You see, when your opponent's number one issue is putting statewide vouchers in our public education system, you better step up to the plate. And so my family and I made that decision that I would run for lieutenant governor. I had to do this. And it's because we know that education plays the most important part of the fabric of the state of Texas. You know, people will talk about roads and about, about water projects, very, very important. That's infrastructure. But the infrastructure of opportunity is our public school systems. Our challenge is to get our students to and through our public school system. And there's a lot of debate, right? Uh, we have a court challenge right now. We don't know what Judge Dietz's decision is going to be. But instead of focusing on how much it's going to cost, the focus should be on how do we value teachers. If you answer that, I can tell you, you're going to understand what it takes uh, to have great teachers in our school classrooms. We know that's where the learning takes place. And I've got to tell you, I'm a real fan of technology. Uh, I'm a pharmacist by profession. And I got to live the dream of owning my own pharmacy and medical clinic for years still work part-time in the pharmacy. And so for 34 years, I've been listening to my patients and Texans across a prescription counter. And 201, I know sometimes I can't get those moms and dads and grandparents to be compliant to get on, you know, to do the right thing for them, but they will do almost anything if they think it's going to improve the lives of their children and their grandchildren. And so when I tell you that it's the education piece that's going to make Texas or break Texas, it's the absolute truth. We know, yeah, abs yes, from the, uh, and I don't have to tell you, you're the ones that mold the minds, you're the ones that provide inspiration, and I love that technology. But you can never replace that teacher in a classroom. Because there is that moment there is that aha, that epiphany, you know, and, and I've seen it with, with the teachers in my family and I experienced it first time. Really, when you get that information that goes from the teacher to the student and they get it, it's that magic moment and you see it, whether you're at the elementary level, the middle school or the high school, and they get it and it's just, it's a magic moment. You can't get that just sitting in front of a screen. It just doesn't happen. Now, you can have blended education, and I'm very much a proponent of that, but you really need to have a quality teacher in the classroom. We should answer that question this legislative session. Over the last 15 years, as a member of the Education Committee, I've worked with TCTA to improve the conditions for our teachers. You are the manager of your classroom. You are the manager of the curriculum. And thank goodness we finally, at least at the high school level, have reduced the amount of testing so that teachers are free to teach and students are free to learn. Now, we still have some work to do at the elementary levels. 
And I don't think anybody in this room doesn't mind the accountability. But when your whole performance and evaluation as a teacher is what one student and your group of your student does on one day on a test, that really doesn't measure that aha moment. That doesn't measure what you do. That doesn't measure progress for that student. It doesn't tell you what those students came in and where you are when they leave your classroom to go to the next. And so I know that that's not the answer. And, but we all understand accountability. But when it drives the system rather than the curriculum, which you should be in charge of. You know where your students are, and I know that. It's what you do. It's what you do not because that you're gonna live a large life, right? You do it because you love it. You're here because you love your profession, but you're here mainly because you love those children. And I know that, because I am a proud daughter a sister and a sister-in-law of classroom teachers. And I see my sister, year after year, taking money out of her own pocket to do those school supplies. I saw my brother take money out of his own pocket because he knew some kid just didn't have that money for that field trip. I saw my mom stay hours and hours and go ask Go ask music stores if there was anything that she could do to get old music instruments. And then we had barbecue fundraisers at our house, so we'd have enough money so she could get the instruments fixed to help those, those band members because she wanted to have the band and the choir do concerts and things together. I watch that, and I know that. And so it's your personal sacrifice. You alone make that difference. But you together as an organization make things move in Austin. And so I'm here today because I need your help. There's gonna be a clear contrast between those candidates. I ask you to look at what the other side is offering. When asked, well, what do you do if you can't get a quality teacher? You said, well, we can just have online learning. When asked what the most compelling and urgent question was and how do we solve and how do we make sure that our education is complete and that our students are performing? They said, well, we need vouchers. That's not it, folks, and you know it. You know that for Texas to remain successful, for our promise to the next generation to be fulfilled, it starts in the classroom. And it starts with the youngest of our students, including pre-K. I'm not the first generation in my family to have a college degree. That's my mom and dad. But my grandmothers were very wise. And although I'm a sixth generation Texan, the San Miguel family is from Maverick County. Um, my, both my grandmothers were born in Mexico. And you know they didn't have much but a third grade education, but they were very wise. And they always grew up just like you, know, you hear the stories of your grandparents. And they would always have these little dichos, these little wise sayings. And the one that my grandmother always said is, el que sabe que no sabe, sabe algo. Which means, if you know what you don't know, you know something. Okay? <laughs> very true. Well, education in our state is very complex. And we don't know everything. And we don't know what Judge Deet's ruling is going to be on the school finance suit. But what we do know is that we do not have adequate resources right now for you to do the job of educating our children, of getting re that workforce ready for the next education. We may not know everything, but what we do know is that we need to reduce that testing so that you are actually teaching to the curriculum and not teaching to the test. We don't know everything, but what we do know is that you have to be the final say and the authority in your classrooms so that those students get the maximum benefit. And I know that not just because I'm the daughter of teachers. I know that because I've been a public policy maker and we've tried it the other way and we know when we get the best outcomes from our students, it's when everybody is turning somersaults to get the classroom teachers what they need for their students. So muchisimas gracias. I don't know everything, but what I do know is that I need your help. Por favor, please. Help us, get involved, know what the candidates are saying, and then tell your family and friends. 
There is too much at stake in this election for y'all to stay on the sidelines. Gracias, God bless you. Be safe going home. Thank you, Grace. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Dios y Texas.